So let's talk about getting some warrior phalanxes and living metal on the tabletop, with a rough overview of how to start a Necron army in 10th edition Warhammer 40k. Hey there and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Necrons, and in this video I thought I'd do a breakdown of a few ways that you could think about getting some Necrons on the tabletop, and a few tips for first games with the army. First we'll talk about why you might want to collect Necrons in the first place, a few of the pros and cons of the army, then go on to some initial planning ideas, first miniature purchases, and some ideas for expanding the army, then talk game rules and finish up with one idea of an army list. Loads to talk about for the Tomb Worlds, so let's jump straight in. First up, why might you want to collect a Necron army in the first place? In general, Necrons are a very popular faction in Warhammer 40k, kind of iconic grimdark robot skeletons in space. They do have a very distinctive look and are pretty ominous on the tabletop, and a whole load of people got into the faction in 9th edition, where they received really quite a lot of fun and shiny updated new kits. In the lore, the Necrons are an ancient and eldritch Xenos race. They fought in a great war in heaven against the Old Ones, and during that conflict, they were tricked into swapping their flesh for metal by the mysterious and sinister deities, the Catan. Unfortunately, the transaction cost them all their souls, even if it did bring them immortality, essentially. Necrons won the war, enslaved their former Catan gods, and went to sleep in their tomb worlds for millennia, and are only now stirring to reclaim their realm as interlopers trespass on their worlds, and disturb secrets and armies they really wish that they'd left hidden. In battle, the Necrons tend to fight with silent phalanxes of marching warriors, armed with some sinister, glowy, and unknowable technology from eons ago, things like the gauss weapons that dissolve the enemy at the molecular level, crackling arcs of Tesla, and making great use of dimensional shifting technology, sometimes shielding their forces from harm with shields that deflect things into entire extra dimensions. When they're shot down, their living metal reanimation protocols have them arise from the dead once more, and great nobles stride amongst the ranks, commanding their ancient dynasties into battle to reclaim their tomb worlds and their realms. Really quite a fun faction with some good lore, I think. Miniatures-wise, at the moment I'd consider Necrons to have a strong miniature range, really quite a lot of plastic kits that got redone in 9th edition, reimagining much of the faction in style and adding in loads of new units and options. I'd argue that their miniatures are generally easier than most armies to get on the table, really quite fast to paint depending on exactly what style you go for. Emphasis on metallics and glowy bits does help with that really. There are still a few older miniatures in their range, some of the oldest currently being things like the resin Catan miniatures and the regular locust destroyers with the gas cannons, the last holdout of the green rods in the army, who were sort of defining for the faction when they first came out a long time back. Just to take a look through their miniature range, here on the left are some Necron warriors armed with gas flares and reapers. These are the basic marching phalanxes of the army. Pretty much soulless and mindless, and just do the overlord's bidding. They've got some scarab swarms with them at the front there. On the right is a Necron overlord. He's gesturing around with a mysterious sphere called a resurrection orb. At the direction of that, the living metal heals together, repairs great damage, and on the battlefield resurrects miniatures from the dead. Here's a cryptech and some Canoptech creations. The cryptech on the left is a chronomancer who can manipulate time and shield his warriors from harm and beside him are some canoptic race patrolling the tomb worlds for interlopers. They're essentially advanced mechanical automata that do much of the grunt work of the Necron administration. They're horrific to opponents to fight in battle as well, as they can phase through objects and solid walls, appearing where they're least expected. On the left, here's a fragment of a fractured star god in the Catan Shard of the Void Dragon. Really quite a cool and eldritch horror-type miniature there, with a glowing room where his face should be. A pretty spectacular centerpiece to a collection. There's some Scorpet destroyers on the right who modify their bodies with blades and weapons to better destroy all life. And here we have a couple of examples of Necron armor, the shadowy space pyramids that are the monoliths, Necron warriors materializing through their eternity gate from places far away. And on the right, here's a shadowy annihilation barge, a fairly spindling looking vehicle relying on its quantum shielding to deflect enemy damage while it opens fire with that enormous Tesla destructor. Overall, their big range makes Necrons a fairly flexible army, lots of options for both ranged units, melee units, armour and infantry. Price-wise, I'd say that Necrons are somewhat middling as Warhammer 40k goes. They would have been ranked as one of the cheapest around about 3 years or so ago, when they had lots of deals and things on offer from the 9th edition starter sets and the Imperium magazine, but in general now most of those have gone away. With their current kits, i say they're not stand out good value anymore, certainly not compared with some factions in the game but they're not quite as bad as some of the standout costly armies in Warhammer 40k, where you get very little points or miniatures per money invested. 
Finally, for gameplay, their rules are from Codex Necrons now, so they are one of the armies that has a full range of detachments, and that's probably an advantage compared with the armies without at the moment. Typically, they tend to be a fairly durable army, with a big emphasis on that reanimation protocols mechanic, squads and units healing, and they have a few ways to manipulate that. As mentioned, plenty of unit choice allows them to play in different ways if it makes sense for them. Though perhaps most typically they're somewhat of a short range shooting army with a lot of options revolving around that and tend to fight as a bit more of a war of attrition as opposed to just dealing the opponent enormous damage dealing knockout blows. And compared with some armies they can be a little bit more slow and ponderous to bring themselves to bear. Lots of movement characteristics tending to be things like 5, 8 or 10 inches rather than 6 or 12 for some other factions. For in-game power, things are a little bit up in the air at the moment with the recent release of the new Codex. We'll have to wait for tournament results to see how they're getting on. I suspect they're probably going to land somewhere in the mid-tier myself. The Canoptic Core looks like it might be one of the best ways to play them, with some very big damage for their Cryptex and Canoptic creations. Overall though, I'd say lots of good reasons to collect Necrons, they are very popular. Fun lore and plenty of core miniature choice, which aren't really too hard to put on the table either from a time or money perspective, at least compared with some armies out there. If you do decide to go for Necrons, there's plenty of places that you could seek a little bit of extra info. If you are committed to the faction, it might not be the worst idea to pick up the codex somewhat early. It does have plenty of lore, miniature galleries and the current rules, so it's a reasonable enough place to start for how to get a handle on the tomb worlds in general. They are at least somewhat expensive though, £35 or $60, though can often at least resell quite well at the end of their useful life. Otherwise, plenty of ways that you can mess around with army lists and things without picking up the codex. Battle Scribe and Warhopedia exist. Games Workshop's app is there and can allow some army building, though it's more useful if you have the codex code. Can be a way to put some units together to see what you could get in an army of any given size. You could proxy miniatures in game to try them out before you buy them. Tabletop simulator or just proxying them in the flesh could be good. And there is an absolute ton of content here on YouTube. I have made plenty of Necron videos myself. I'll certainly aim to keep a few more coming for the new codex. Perhaps one of the best places to start for someone who's newer to the faction might be my full codex review. It is a slightly long one, but you can delve into sections as interested. There's plenty of other creators out there as well, making some great stuff for the Necrons. And there's also lots of things like battle reports to see them in action, painting guides, and plenty of lore in abundance on other channels. Just give things a search for a little bit more inspiration. Otherwise, I'd certainly recommend checking out social media posts. Necrons have specific Facebook pages, discords, and subreddits. Can be an easy way just to imbibe a bit of information about the tomb worlds and see what other collectors are toying with or painting or asking questions. You can certainly ask some experienced hobbyists for a little bit of advice there as well. When you're in the planning stage, you might have a bit of a think as to what sort of Necron force you really want to get painted up. Maybe you could start by just having a rough draft at an initial 1000 point or 2000 point list and see what sort of models that might need to get there. I'd probably use Battlescribe for that, maybe Warhammer's app if you have the codex. Lots of people just like to collect a balanced army for the faction to exemplify all different facets of the army and choose the miniatures that they like the most. Though you definitely could skew to one thing or another, lots of things that you can build around in 40k. You might decide that you want to go for a themed destroyer cult or play a bit of a silver tide necron army with huge phalanxes of warriors and try and outnumber the foe with sheer bodies. You could go multiple Catan as they're really quite tough and tanky at the moment. Or you could even go fairly heavy on quantum shielded vehicles, lots of doomsday arcs, doomstalkers or annihilation barges and have some seriously heavy firepower to gun the opponent down with. You also have the option of building around either a specific dynasty from the lore or a specific detachment from the codex. Here are just a few of the major Necron dynasties out there. I'd say these dynasties aren't really quite as well known as things like say Space Marine chapters or Imperial Guard regiments perhaps but they do have their own theme and sub-personalities within the Necron race, with the way that Games Workshop has been making 10th edition work as well. None of these dynasties are necessarily tied to any sort of in-game rules anymore. You can use any of these to represent any of the detachments in the Codex, so you're not missing out on anything by sticking to theme if you want to. There's quite a lot of fun choices out there, like the bloodthirsty Novok who like to fight at close range, the bronze armoured Zarakan dynasty of the Silent King himself, you often tend to see their artwork on the box sets for the Necrons these days. The Saltek dynasty of Imhotep the Stormlord. They're perhaps the more classic silver armoured Necrons with the green gauss. A throwback to when Necrons first released for 40k in a big way. And otherwise the teleporting Nefrek who can dissolve themselves into beams of golden lights to translocate across the board. They're quite well represented by the Hypercrypt Legion. 
the solar fury of Mefrid, often liking to utterly eradicate their foe at range, and the territorial Nihilac Necrons, who would get quite a fun colour scheme, I think. Otherwise, for the actual choice of rules in-game, that would be the Necron Detachment, and the general principle of this is that in the Codex, none of them really lock out any models, so it means that technically any Necron army can pick any one of these, but they do heavily incentivize certain picks, besides maybe the Awakened Dynasty, perhaps. Say, for example, the Canoptech Court really heavily incentivizes both Cryptech and Canoptech units, and doesn't really give you any benefits for other things in that detachment. The Awakened Dynasty is quite nice, mainly focusing on units with leaders, which can be quite a lot of the Necron force, and otherwise there's a Basin's Phalanx with Overlords leading Triarch Praetorians and Lich Guard. Annihilation Legion, which focuses on a Destroyer Cult, the Hypercrypt Legion for teleport things, Again, I feel like that one's at least fairly general purpose, though it does seem to heavily encourage you to get a monolith. And the Canoptech Court, as mentioned, that's very much Cryptech and Canoptech unit focused. You can try and build deliberately to one of these. I feel like if you were trying to make an Annihilation Legion, you'd be going heavy on the Destroyers. Or for a Basin's Phalanx, you might be building up big squads of Necron Elites. Otherwise, when you're getting things together, it's probably worth thinking about painting up some test models to work out your colour scheme. For me, I think a standard Necron Warrior would be really quite a good place to start for the faction. A basic trooper that isn't going to matter too much when it's in the ranks, so a good place to do a little bit of experimentation and see what works out and what doesn't. You could even potentially paint up a few in different colour schemes to see which one you like the most. You could follow one of the dynasties that we've mentioned from the lore. There are plenty of others, more minor ones and lesser known. Or you could absolutely certainly just make up your own dynasty. That is a path that's taken by really quite a lot of people. It might be helpful just to take a look at a few painting guides here on YouTube. Games Workshop themselves have made a few, but there's loads from other creators to do things in different ways. And as mentioned earlier, I would bear in mind that if you wanted just to get a force of Necrons on the table as fast as possible, and maybe painting isn't as much the thing that you're interested in, it can be very, very easy to mass produce if you want to. If you're going for Sotek Dynasty, for example, Warriors could be as simple as spray them all silver, wash them in known oil, and then just pick out a few key details in black and green like the guns, and you could be pretty much good to go with a fairly effective colour scheme with very little effort whatsoever. Another option that you could think about with painting Necrons would be doing a bit of glow effects on all the little glowing things that they have, as loads festooned all over the vehicles and even the basic troops. I have seen plenty of people make quite good use of an airbrush with that, that can be nice just to have some soft lighting effects emanating from the glowing sphere. That might be a little bit technical for people new to 40 but definitely could be an effective way that you could go down, and again realistically might not take the worst amount of time compared with other ways to get an army produced en masse. That brings us to the miniatures, and currently I'd be most tempted to start with one of these three, either a basic box of troops, combat patrol necrons, or if you happen to find one locally, a pass discount box could be nice enough if they're going cheap, though not being on current sale, it does mean that many of them won't be. Combat Patrol Necrons has been updated somewhat recently. It's now this box with 10 Necron Warriors, an Overlord with the Tachyon Arrow, 3 Scarab Swarms, 3 Scorpet Destroyers, and a Canoptic Doomstalker. I'd say as it goes, it isn't the worst place to start getting into Necrons. The box sets £95, €125, Euros, or $160, US dollars, and it does give you a discount on the miniatures contained within, most of which are really quite general purpose units that you might well want in your army. It is rather unfortunate if you compare it to other combat patrol sets though, the discount on this is lower than most of the other offerings that Games Workshop has out there. A theoretical discount rate compared with buying these kits separately of just 18%, when often the combat patrols tend to range in the 30 to 35 sort of range on average. I believe that this might be the single lowest discount one from Games Workshop besides the Space Marines combat patrol with the Terminators, and that one's not even really a fair comparison anyway, as you can get that much cheaper with the starter sets already. At least the points in the box aren't too bad though, at 460 points, that is a fair chunk towards an army. I feel like most players are going to want Necron Warriors as the core troops choice for the faction. The Scorpet Destroyers and Canoptech Doomstalker are interesting enough, lots of people have some good love for the Doomstalker as a sort of War of the Worlds type walker, I do think it looks rather cool. The Overlord's the iconic HQ of the faction, though often you might want the Resurrection Orb one. And the Scarab Swarms are cheap and effective, good screens and can do secondary objectives. It might be a little bit less used for people who collected Necrons in 9th edition than before though. I just feel that quite a lot of those collectors might already have these miniatures in their armies. As ever, if you're buying 40k miniatures, I would bear in mind the different options that you have. Direct from Games Workshop is generally the most reliable, but also the most expensive. Often newer players tend to go there and not realise that there's other options available. 
In most places around the world, Games Workshop have a system where they allow discount retailers to sell exactly the same thing but cheaper. I've got a few of those links down in the video description, say Element Games in the UK, Feminist Workshop in Canada, or Gap Games in Australia. All of those give good discounts compared with Games Workshop's offerings, usually ranging in the 10-20% to sort of mark. Amazon really isn't the worst idea either in the USA. Again, typically they will have some savings compared with GW offerings. All of those are links down in the video description. They generally do save money compared with GW. And they are affiliate links as well, so help out Allspec's tactics a bit if you did choose to buy anything through them. Otherwise, for any given miniature, it can often just be worth checking out eBay and the second-hand market just to see if there's anything that might be appropriate going for you. Necrons are a popular faction and things do tend to crop up there. Anything from individual squads and miniatures to four armies. Quality can obviously be variable, but it can be a way of both saving money and time with getting a new painted army on the table sort of quick. Otherwise, bear in mind that there's options for 3D printing and third-party miniatures out there as well. There are quite a few creators out there who have made some sort of not Necron sort of designs, things that are legally distinct from Games Workshop's miniatures, but still sort of look the part that they might do for a Necron proxy army. They're not the hardest to find if you give them a Google. And they can just be a fun option for different alternative sculpts as well that could give you a very unique and different collection with some aesthetic customization. Otherwise, I bear in mind that out there in the wild you might find some other discount kits, things that Games Workshop have released over the past few years, but now all of these are out of production so you can't buy them directly from the Warhammer web store. The old Combat Patrol might be of interest to some people, it does get you a better discount though the miniatures are a bit older, it gives you a Knight or Doom Scythe, some Tomb Blades, Immortals or Death Marks, plus an Overlord with a Resurrection Orb. Not the worst deal for another collection of Krons to expand the army in a very different way. If you could find that for some semblance of its original price, then it might not be the worst. You might occasionally find things crop up on eBay as well for things that got released in the Imperium magazine, though often quite discounted Necron releases for those. Otherwise, for the 9th edition starter sets, there was the Indomitus box. The Necron half of it is on the right, and that was an amazing deal at the time. You might still be able to pick up some things from eBay or box half elsewhere. They will be going for significantly more than they used to be at this time though. The Elite Starter Set or the Recruit Starter Set were also quite good deals in 9th edition, coming with Space Marines plus Necrons. The Elite one is quite close in offering to the current Combat Patrol though, so it would be more of an alternative way of getting hold of the miniatures if it happened to be cheaper at the price that you'd pay for it. Otherwise, over the last year or so there have been other discount offerings. Boarding Patrol Necrons was this one on the right. That one got you some Lich Guard or Triad Praetorians in quite good numbers. Aphelian Destroyers and some more Warriors. Again, that was considered one of the best here boarding patrols, I think. And last Christmas also had a World Scout Legion featuring a pair of Canoptic Doomstalkers, plus some Flayed Ones and Aphidians. Again, I'd certainly rate that as a nice enough expansion box to a Necron force if you could find one. Otherwise, if the goal is to try and build up a Necron army to a good points level with a bit less money or effort, then Catan could be an easy way to go. In particular, the Nightbring and the Deceiver are only £30, €40 Euros or $50 from Games Workshop. They are older resin miniatures in the range, though I feel like the sculpts are kind of iconic. And they are really powerful models in-game, getting you over 250 points worth of miniatures. And in particular, the Nightbringer can really put the smack down on most enemy heroes. It's kind of rare for Games Workshop to have any offerings that give you 5 or more points per dollar invested, so these could be a very interesting way for that. I suspect at some point they will get some big redos like the Void Dragon did, though I guess that for big centerpiece models they're not going to happen too regularly. Probably not going to happen before 11th edition, so you get plenty of use out of the miniatures for many years to come. I've seen other people convert a Transcendent Katarn in various ways. I feel like that one is a miniature that should really allow you just to convert what you want really. There are fragments of ancient star deities, so you could really let your imagination go wild. Use other kits from Games Workshop's range or other miniature providers. Just try and make something that's very roughly the same sort of size as the one that comes in the Tesseract Vault. On the other hand, a few kits are certainly considered more expensive as well for what they are. Flayed ones are an often held up example of a kit that really doesn't get you very much good plastic for the amount of money that they cost. Just five warrior sized monopose miniatures. They really do feel like they should either have been cheaper or in a box set of 10 really. And the monolith is maybe another miniature that does feel painfully pricey for one of the most iconic Necron models. A very cool centerpiece, but it's £110 or $185. It does seem to be a miniature that a lot of collectors are a bit wary of picking up. Otherwise, more of a fun aside than anything else, I thought I might just mention this often shared Sprucrons post. 
the hobby hero who decided to make an entire Necron army entirely out of Games Workshop sprues that you have the models built on. Very silly, but also pretty awesome. There's some spiders in the back and Necron warrior ranks at the front, plus some scarab swarms that are just literally bits of sprues. The funny thing is that this is entirely 100% official Games Workshop parts, so I guess you can take this to Games Workshop stores, no questions asked. Otherwise, just for a few thoughts as to how to expand an army, I'd always bear in mind that Games Workshop's rules and things will change over time. Things do get better and worse with points changes, so there's definitely lots of scope for just collecting the units that you like. At least the Necron datasheets from the Codex should be fairly set in stone for the duration though. It's very early days for the Codex and we don't have the official points cost to download from Games Workshop yet, though there certainly have been hints. I would say that a few units really are looking like they've gone up in the world since the Codex, and these might be a few of them. The Canoptic race with Technomancers are both pretty fast and pretty dangerous and very durable. Really quite nice if you're playing the Canoptic Court or the Awakened Dynasty Detachment, they both have some positives. Long range anti-tank is usually at least fairly efficient for the Necrons, Locust Heavy Destroyers, the Doomstalker and the Doomsday Arc are all some of the best choices for putting down enemy heavy hitters at range. Immortals seem to have some fairly strong combos, perhaps particularly with their Tesla and the Canoptic Court, though most of the time you can have them fishing for double exploding sixes with their big Tesla weapons in other detachments as well and Plasmancers do well to back them up with getting those exploding hits on a 5. The Catan Shards, I feel like they've all seriously gone up in the world. They've gained a 5 plus feel no pain, and rumours have them not increasing in points very much. Things like the Nightbringer and the Void Dragon just both do serious amounts of damage and are enormously tanky. Very hard models to go wrong with there. And otherwise, I think it's worth having at least some units that might be either a bit faster or have some interesting deployment options to scoot around doing secondary objectives, Things like small units of Scarabs, Tomb Blades, Death Marks or Ophidian Destroyers. All of those can be interesting to appear on the board where they're most needed and do things like the tactical objectives. For support choices for the Phalanxes, Imitech the Stormlord and the regular Overlords I think are reasonable enough choices for their command point things. And most of the Cryptechs are really quite cheap and good value, offering good durability boosts for how many points they cost. Obviously plenty of things will get seriously better or worse depending on the detachment that you're fielding, so raw unit power isn't exactly the end of the story. In any case, I'd gradually expand in small chunks, getting games in as you go. If you started with a combat patrol box set, you could play some of the actual combat patrol games of Warhammer 40k, and then move on to bigger and better things from there, having a rough idea where you're headed, and just collect things in small chunks, get them painted up and played with. When you do get onto the board, the Necron's core rule is this reanimation protocol special rule. This is basically allows you to regenerate D3 wounds on your Necrons each command phase, starting up by healing any models that are injured, and then if you had any slain models in the squad, they can return to the board one by one with the rest of those wounds. It basically means that damaged units slowly regrow over time, and there are a few things that can allow you to regenerate a bit better, things like Resurrection Orbs or the Canoptech Reanimator. It does mean that there's perhaps a bit of play to your opponent being able to just focus all their guns and really focus down one squad. If they fully kill things, then you don't get to reanimate. But lots of armies will be at least somewhat forced to do a bit of chip damage to multiple units, and that really punishes that, as a lot of chip damage just basically regrows, so your Necrons won't care about that. Otherwise, for dynasties that are looking a little bit stronger out of the gate, the Awakened Dynasty, Canoptic Court and Hypercrypt Legion are probably some of the most interesting. The Awakened Dynasty is probably going to be one that attracts a lot of new players as it's just fairly balanced and you're not too incentivized to skew to any one thing. Its main emphasis is on infantry units with character leaders which tend to be at least fairly interesting in their own right. The Canoptic Court does look like it's got a whole load of raw power. It's got a power matrix that allows your Canoptic units to reroll or hit rolls. Could be really big and scary for Wraiths, Doomstalkers and Immortals led by Plasmancers. And the Hypercrypt Legion has some interesting teleport shenanigans, Necrons warping on and off the board. Potentially very scary for getting powerful lines of sight with big shooting units. That one does kind of encourage you to get a monolith, which is a big investment and might be a turn off for some. Though I'd say it's not unplayable without it, you just lose a lot of stratagem options. Otherwise I'd say that initially the other two are looking a bit less standout. A basin Phalanx gives you a damage boost for Lich Guard and Triarch Praetorians. The core rules aren't awful, but beyond that, maybe the supporting rules aren't as standout. And Annihilation Legion is just maybe a bit painfully focused on melee destroyers. It's very good for Scorpec destroyers and Scorpec lords with good support for them, but beyond that just doesn't really do very much for most of the rest of the army. Initially, this one's looking a little bit underpowered. Finally, just to round up and showcase what a Necron army could look like on the table, here's one basic 2000 point starter list idea. 
absolutely not aiming to be too optimised, just building out from a combat patrol, using and expanding on a few of the miniatures there. The list is headed up by an overlord with the Veil of Darkness and Oric and the Diviner, who are joining a big Necron warrior squad to give them a 4 plus invulnerable save, and some free stratagems and things. The warriors take Gauss Reapers, and the Veil of Darkness could allow them to teleport them to the midfield and hit the enemy with a bunch of Gauss shooting. There's a Technomancer with the Netherrealm caskets to allow some stealth as well as this feel no pain for a big Wraith unit. Six can opt a race with the Claws and the Pascal Beamers, should be quite a nice general purpose unit that can tank a bit of damage, and again could be okay for scrapping over the midfield objective points. Then for some secondary objective and skirmishing support, there's two units of Scarab Swarms, and one unit of three Ophidian Destroyers that can borrow on and off the boards to get exactly where they're needed. There's a big and scary counter charge threat with some Scorpet Destroyers, they'd aim to advance as safely as possible behind cover to hopefully counter charge the enemy coming up to the Wraiths or the Warriors. They get some nasty reroll all hits on the charge now, so I've got a bit better in damage output at least. And then backing all of that up are a few fairly enormous threats, a Doomsday Arc and a Canoptech Doomstalker to put down some heavy anti-tank firepower from the backfield, a single Locust Heavy Destroyer with the Gauss Cannon to threaten an enormous damage 6 shot, and then no less than a pair of Katarn, the awesome Katarn Shard of the Void Dragon and the Nightbringer, both bringing really quite a lot of points to the table, and also being enormously tanky for how tough and halving damage and their feel no pain type saves. Hopefully should be a list that is at least fairly easy to use, I feel like the Katarn are at least fairly forgiving provided you're fairly aggressive with them, some heavy firepower and some fairly tough objective control units to take the midfield while the rest of the army does its damage thing. In any case, hope you've enjoyed a few thoughts as to getting a Necron's army on the table. Let me know your ideas down in the comments below, or if there's anything else that I might have missed that experienced Tomb World Generals might be able to point out. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, and I certainly will have some more for the Necrons on the way. Finally, if you've been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.